How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 50 and a very special episode of the Lowdown Show Brain Wars on the Holes Bart Wrestling Podcast. We are a Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. And this week we have a very special edition of the episode entitled WrestleMania 33 Rebooked. Uh, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording the podcast, it's posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP, and it's also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand War. So go check us out, wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the podcast by tweeting and following at WP. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I am continuing to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Yep. I apologize for that intro, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll probably fix it up for YouTube and stuff in iTunes, but uh, I had the button pushed. You know, that remember we had that one day where our voice is going to be up and down? Oh, Christ. So for Spreaker, it's going to sound a little, little, little shaky, but uh, for I'll edit. We'll do some editing, and I'll fix it up for YouTube and iTunes, you listeners out there, which that's where basically everyone listens to us. Yep. We're in that poll one day. Everyone listens to us on iTunes or, or uh, YouTube. That's okay. Okay. But we're allowed to botch on Spreaker. You know, Dana Brooke, you're not allowed to botch anywhere else. If she okay. can botch live, we can do it too. Yeah. It's like they put her on Raw and she botches all the time. Yep. Greg says, greetings, gentlemen. Greetings, Greg. Greetings. And welcome, guys. So again, like I said, a very special episode of the podcast. We're having our special all day one next week. But this week, the Let On Show for its 50th week, we uh, changed it up a little bit. Just uh, We revamped it. Um, so basically. The beginning of the show, we're going to do the lowdown show as we always do. We're going to quickly review Raw and SmackDown, uh, not as long as we usually do. It's going to be a very quick review. And then we'll get into uh, the second part of the show, which will take up most of the time, and that is WrestleMania 33 Rebook. Basically, we have drawn the entire WrestleMania 33 card and rebook Sun matches the way we would have done it and the way uh, we think made would have made more sense for this year's WrestleMania. There's no fantasy matchups. You're not going to get Hulk Hogan or The Rock or Bret Hart, any shit like that into this. This is strictly to what the car looks like right now, but our thoughts and what we think would have made sense. So we got some pretty interesting matches. I think a lot of them you, gonna like, you guys are going to love out there and probably agree with us uh, what we should change. And I also asked you guys on Twitter, if you could change one match on the card, what would it be? And we'll get into that when we get into that part of the show. But for the beginning part, we don't have the tweets any uh, for this week. Uh, we don't have the list of 10. Uh, and we don't have there to be headlines. Which, I mean, I could talk about the, just the, the highlight of a few things that have been happening this week. Um, obviously, uh, the sad news from JR's wife uh, passing away. So uh, all our prayers and thoughts are with JR and his uh, family right now. Apparently, he's still um, going to be at WrestleCon. This that's week. crazy, man. So. That's nuts. Um uh, also, I heard, I'm hearing that uh, Vince is in the process of buying Ring of Honor, and I'm hearing the reason why is because they want the plethora of talent that are assigned to Ring of Honor to come to WWE, and geez, man, I know, maybe they, maybe just the Performance Center people are just not doing as well as Vince and Triple H want them to do. Maybe they, like, they need, need more talent, and what better way to do it than buy Ring of Honor? Especially when you're calling up all these people. You, you just look at Ring of Honor's roster, you're like, oh my god, man, WWE is about to get like way better if that happens. <laughs> It's going to be insane. Like, NXT is going to be freaking nuts. So, interesting. We'll see what happens. Other than that, I haven't seen a lot of news the out there. Um, Paige is going through some health, mental health issues, obviously, with, you know, the obvious reasons. Uh, sucks, man. Feel bad for her. And I guess Del Rio is feeling some of the effects, too. Like, he's going through some stressful times, too. And he's trying to do this thing with Impact Wrestling. So, double they, stress right there. Yeah. <laughs> they, he's announced that he won't be going to WrestleCon because of everything that's happening. So, yeah. So, uh, other than that, I don't really, I didn't really see a lot of news out there. You want to so. talk about your boys, the Broken Hardies? Oh yeah, that too. Uh, Broken Hardies are uh, set to be in final contract talks with WWE. So, more than likely, it's probably a high end of the '90s percentage now that the Broken Hardies will be in WWE. Whether to use a broken gimmick or not is still yet to be said in they the really rumors. Should. So it's tough because the whole legal battle with uh, 
TNA, but Darby should just do it anyways. TNA's law lawyers against Darby's lawyers. <laughs> That's like putting the big show up against uh, Rey Mysterio, man. <laughs> it's, it, it, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you have Darby lawyers, these big, giant, dominate all lawyers, and you got TNA's who are... No, you know, but, but not Rey Mysterio, because he actually beat fine, the big a local Let's say James jobber. Ellsworth. Local jobber yeah, against James the Ellsworth. big show. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um... Greg's like Christopher Daniels and Frank Kazarian, future ta NXT tag champs. Woo! Dude, don't even get me started. The young Bucks. Yeah, Young Bucks. The Bucks of youth, according to the Broken Hardies. <laughs> and the, facing the day of new. <laughs> Christ. Uh, new day this week. I can't wait to talk about that. Um, so, yeah, that's the rundown of the show. And I guess the lowdown, pun intended. This, this, will, be the, this will be our last episode before. Our, uh, yeah, again, the guys, next Orlando. week. Lowdown Orlando, if you don't know, we'll be doing a special all-day podcast Saturday, April 1st, 2017, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we'll be reviewing the go-home shows for that week for Raw and SmackDown. We're also going to be reviewing NXT TakeOver Orlando, and then we're going to be uh, giving our predictions and thoughts for the WrestleMania 33 card, Jeez. and we'll be taking all Garbage. Skype calls, hearing all your thoughts and questions. We're just going to talk wrestling, so stay tuned for that. So there will be no show Thursday yeah, or Friday. No show. I'm still working on some uh, contests and prizes. I'm thinking uh, contest-wise, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to my boy No Cell Phil, and this is one idea I had in mind. Um, my boy No Cell Phil knows how to create Google Docs. Like He's a he's genius at those things, okay? He's going to create one for us, and basically it's going to have to do with NXT TakeOver Orlando and how you guys predict the card, and then the winner is going to win a prize, the first prize on the show. And I'll do that, and then I have some other ideas for the rest of the show. So stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. And, yes, next Saturday. It's getting close. Really close. Mm -hmm. WrestleMania. Doesn't even feel like WrestleMania. Doesn't. It's terrible. It's going to be shit. I was telling you yesterday, I w if I was going, I'd be looking more forward to WrestleCon. If you haven't seen WrestleCon's lineup for this year, oh my god, yeah. there's like a hundred people. I'd rather, if we were down there, you're telling me yesterday, if we were down there, I'd rather go to uh, WrestleCon. WrestleCon than Wrestle, or was it, WrestleMania Access. Cheaper, you actually get to talk to the people. Yeah. And it's just a cooler atmosphere. Yeah, true. I don't know, just... Beyond. I don't really feel like going to Access and getting to meet someone for 20 seconds and getting a picture over the table. Yeah. And then having to leave. And not being able to talk to them or anything. Yeah. Interesting. Anyways, so we got the first part of the show out of the way, guys. Really quick, we do the Raw review. Terrible again this week. Raw sucked. Seriously. It was bad. It was Monday Night Promos. It wasn't Monday Night Raw. Might as well just titled it that this week. Literally, it was more promos and filler garbage than anything else. And there's no real build up. Again. They're not – it's like they're not building for WrestleMania. They're building for some crappy Raw-branded pay-per-view coming up. Like – it's like that that, that that logo I sent you of that T-shirt. Pay-per-view? Oh, don't you mean Sunday Night Raw? <laughs> exactly. It's terrible. The lack of build for WrestleMania this year is probably the worst I've ever seen. And I I, uh, I, I shared my thoughts with our uh, our pal Michael Chow on, on, for his podcast. And um, I said that it feels like a – I think the build for Fastlane is better than the WrestleMania build, which is really, really sad. Like, extremely sad. I don't know. It's it's tough that WrestleMania is like that this year, and maybe they got some surprises in store for us, but whatever. Uh, Greg says he met Big E at Access one year, but it was the before the New Day was born. Oh. Interesting. Oh, you met the... Uh, Big E Langston. Fi the five count Big E Langston. <laughs> Three ain't enough. I need five. five. The five yeah. count. Anyways. Raw sucked. Garbage filler, no build for WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> literally, you can sit there and say that the build was all promos. I mean, that's the build, sure. But uh, do you like that? And does anyone like that? I'd rather see some wrestling, some backstage brawling, you know, something to build feuds up like SmackDown does, like barely this week. But I don't know, Raw is just too boring. It's bland. <laughs> and, of course, the burial of superstars that don't need to get buried. Happens on a Raleigh basis, <laughs> especially this week. So we get the opening segment. Mick Foley comes out. He's apologizing, wanting to take a leave of absence. Stephanie interrupts him, ends up firing Mick Foley. So Mick Foley's finally fired. We thought this was going to happen maybe at WrestleMania or the Raw after. So he's finally fired two weeks before WrestleMania, um, which is leading to so much speculation for the new Raw GM. I'm hearing Jim Cornette's name being thrown in there. That'd be fucking <laughs> hilarious. Well, I think um, he's inducting somebody. Yeah, yeah, of course. It had it started to be ran a poll or something. It had like Bischoff, Edge, Jim Cornette, and some other people I don't remember. Um, 
<laughs> Craig's like, Raw's like watching paint dry. I think I'd rather watch paint dry. Well, while you do that, I have to go get a cup because good old 7-Eleven Slurpee cup. Oh, yeah. This broken. is our Spar podcast today, sponsored by 7-Eleven Slurpee. Sponsored by 7-Eleven Slurpee. Dripping on our but podcast unfortunately, table. The fucking Look at that. It's dripping, dripping more than mine. That is hilarious. Well, no, because mine, it's got a hole in it. Oh, wow. God, corporate help. 7-Eleven so gave a, a hole to Corporate Cappy's cup, unfortunately. Wow. Anyways, uh, so yeah, opening segment, we had Mick Foley coming out apologizing again for taking leave abs- for wine taking leave absence, so he got fired. Uh, it, I don't know, it, it's creating all this talk now of the new GM. I'm thinking in the back of my head, man, it's not going to be who we want it to be. You, you think of it like this. Craig says Triple H here on the chat. Uh, yes, Triple H would make sense, but... I don't think he's going to be the GM, Greg. He's down there running NXT, and I'd rather have him down there running NXT and keeping up a, as a good of a product as it is right now than him leaving. You know, and that, it just looks like it's more stressful. I know it's only one day a week, but it just looks like it's more stress. I don't know. It just – we've already seen the authority figure. We've already seen the authority before, and everyone's like, oh, the authority 2.0 is being built again. Yeah, Greg, you said right there. <laughs> I said it before you could even type it. Um, I don't know. It, I, Darby likes doing stuff twice, I know. I don't think we're going to have the authority uh, once again. I honestly don't think so. It's, I don't know. And we got Cooper Cappy back here on the mic after uh, getting a cut. Fuck. <laughs> uh, that's that's unfortunate. Really, really unfortunate. It's okay. Oh, well. My bubblegum Slurpee will live. Yeah. Uh, Craig says uh, it, Triple H could be the new GM of Raw and uh, the return of the authority. I could see it, unfortunately. I don't want it to happen. I just want corporate Kane back. Whatever way <laughs> brings corporate Kane back, I don't care what happens. Yeah. So anyway, Sami Zayn comes out to defend Mick Foley and stands up to Stephanie. Uh, Samoa Joe ends up coming out. Stephanie books Zayn and Joe for right there, right then. Yeah, typical Raw. Um, I was kind of excited for Zayn versus Joe. That's kind of a good matchup. I mean, we already we already seen it before, but, you know, whatever. It was a decent match. Joe ends up choking out Sami Zayn with the Coquina Clutch. Uh... We end up backstage after a commercial break. Foley is telling Zayn backstage he appreciates what he did and gives him a hug goodbye. Foley is seen walking through uh, other superstars like Cesaro and Sheamus and Bailey and saying his goodbyes and, you know, just mumbo-jumbo nonsense. Uh, meets up with Triple H at the end <laughs> and just, like, sitting there all cockly and just comes up to him and says, Have a nice day! Him. As Mick Foley walks leaving. out this dark door, I don't even yeah. know where he <laughs> was walking to. I don't know. And yeah. then you point out, you're like, does he not have bags? Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> Is he leaving with baggers? Did he just come to your arena like that? Okay, that's that's all right, I no, guess. No keys, no nothing. No, okay. no. But did you drive here? What? Are you, where are you going? <laughs> Anyways, uh, move on. We get a Seth Rollins update, injury update once again. Like we haven't had any of eight of these so far. We got a live uh, via satellite from a doctor named Kevin Wilk, who gives us the update on Seth Rollins. <laughs> He says, even with Seth Rollins wanting to wrestle, he will not be cleared to compete for WrestleMania. And the doctor fears that if he wrestles at WrestleMania, he'll be right back into rehab the next day. So, again, it's so cloudy with the the whole, like, 100% is Seth Rollins healthy or not. Uh, my honest opinion, he's not hurt. Or he's not, or he's hurt, but he's not as hurt as they're showing him. I think WWE is just playing like he's really really hurt i think there's gonna be it's gonna be a no sanction match regardless at wrestlemania but i think derby is smart enough not to do much with seth rollins at wrestlemania i do think they were gonna get some interference by Samoa Joe, regardless if he's in the more andre giant memorial battle royal or not we're gonna get kevin owens maybe helping or i think maybe just joe and then there's the tease of valor showing up too who knows it's gonna be like triple h and sting there's gonna be more people involved in this match okay <laughs> And there's no DQ because it's unsa- It's not even a match. It's unsanctioned. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, so, yeah, that's the update on Seth Rollins. We're moving on. We got a horrible Divas match – or women's match. Sorry, I keep calling them Divas. It should be called Divas for the shit they're putting up. Charlotte versus Dana Brooke. Terrible match. Oh Dana Brooke God. is the worst wrestler they, they I've ever want, seen. They make Dana Brooke a face. And they have her go out there and have a match like that where she couldn't even do basic she can't moves wrestle. or run the ropes. She, she can't run the ropes. She's terrible. Like, literally, it's the worst thing I've ever seen on TV. I think Ellsworth runs the ropes better than Dana Brooke. And that's sad. So is this Dana, is Dana Brooke going to become a, a face jobber now? What is this? Gosh, she, she'd be better as a local jobber. 
She needs to go back to the performance center. Needs to go back to NXT. Get another run in there because she's just god awful. Or why couldn't she just be a manager for somebody like the club? Right. We were saying yeah, a long that, time. Ago. That was good at that point. The WWE just ruined that. So Charlotte wins. Next, moving on. Uh, backstage, Stephanie is asking Bailey if she wants a hug because she's all sad for Mick Foley leaving. Bailey says she used to look up to Stephanie, but now she doesn't. Stephanie books Bailey versus Nia Jax. And if Nia Jax wins, she is added to the Mania match. Great. I told More you guys, multi it's multi-woman be matches. Yeah. And you don't even have to get. You don't even have to be anticipated for this because you knew Nia Jax was going to win before this match even fucking started. We knew what the rumored match was going to be. Fatal Four Way. They're not going to do the same Night of Champions match over again. I knew it. it's just garbage. So we we'll move on to the best part of the show. And literally, was the only good part of the show, and it's what drove us to give it a rating. If this part of the show didn't happen, Raw would have gotten a zero. Just saying. The highlight reel with Chris Jericho with his special guest, the real. Kevin Owens, and he shows us a picture on the screen of Kevin Owens as a kid, like I think he was like 11 or 12 years old with a Jericho shirt, doing his pose in his bedroom, and he's got like old dirty wrestling shit all over the wall, like a picture of a chick on the wall in a bathing suit. And Jericho's like, I think I'm sexier than she is anyway. Yeah. Um, Jericho oh. talks about their media match, and is about to put Owens on the list of Jericho when Samoa Joe's music hits. And he's walking out on the ramp. Uh, Jericho's looking all confused. And then Owens comes up from behind Chris Jericho and attacks him. And just tears him apart. And then grabs the list. And tears it to shreds. No! Even eating it and spitting it at Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's the worst thing you could ever do to a man. Is rip his list in half. Yeah. He's got he's got the, the shirt of Jericho. And he's showing it off, man. As Greg says for that t-shirt part. Thank you, Greg. Uh, and that's it. That's probably the best segment of Raw right there. It that's builds good. to their feud. Uh, there's some physicality, which is good, which I want to see in feuds building to WrestleMania. And that was it. It's the best part of Raw. I agree. There, That's probably one of the only feuds that makes sense right now that, that you're actually invested in. There, yeah. There's not a lot of matches on this card that you're actually like emotionally invested in where like, you actually care. Yeah, that's why we're wins. doing this episode. <laughs> we wouldn't be doing this episode if it actually made sense. Um, so moving on, Raw, Perkins versus Kendrick. Of course, two minutes even, if this was, really the, the quickest match I've ever seen. Kendrick basically buried Perkins. And after the match, Kendrick starts showing off that he stole Tozawa's passport. Okay, sick. Cool. And we're going to move on. Backstage, uh, Stephanie books Cesaro and Sheamus in a two-on-four handicap match. The fuck is the two-on-four? Two-on-four. <laughs> Fuck. Well, you just said this. I'm like, what is going on with this? And if they lose their match, WrestleMania is gone. Like at this point, they show them like, do they even know what the fuck they're doing right now? And the club and and, and Enzo and Cast can't even get to get get along. No, like, I don't understand awful. that. And we get into the awful match of Nia versus Bailey, the most obvious match on the card. And it, it was no DQ for some reason. If there's no DQ, why did it keep showing Charlotte and Sasha backstage who are worried about Bailey losing? Why didn't they make a difference and go attack Nia Jax so that she wouldn't be in the match? This was like the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. If Bailey was a heel, they would have. So I'm like, because... okay, so these two are worried about it being a, more than the triple threat. And it's no DQ. So you're going to sit and watch from the back? The fuck is that? <laughs> That just makes you look scared. Of, that just makes you look like a pussy. And you don't want to go out there and attack Nia Jax. You're afraid of a Nia Jax. Terrible. And it's Charlotte and Sasha Banks who are supposed to be built as like the strongest females on your roster. It would have made sense for them to go out and screw Nia Jax over and then Steph still put her in the match. Right? Terrible match this was. Bailey the champion gets squashed. Two weeks before WrestleMania. Way to make your champ look good. Unreal. Next, we get an entering interview with Michael Cole and Triple H. Kind of missed half of it. Um... Felt too long. Felt like they were, it, it, they're just biding time and putting more filler garbage. Uh, Triple H is basically running down Rollins into the crowd, or Rollins running down Rollins and the crowd, making fun of the crowd. Uh, tells Rollins if he wants to fight him at Mania, he needs to sign a contract next week. That basically makes it an unsanctioned match. Triple H called it something else. Which, I'm like, why don't you just call it unsanctioned match? <laughs> and they won't be responsible for his medical bills. Yeah. And that was it. Cool, we didn't even get Seth Rollins to come out or attack him or anything. Again, stupid. Oh, he's going to be there next he's week. He's at rehab because his injury is so bad. Okay. Then we move on to the two-on-four. It it's like Raw this week is just like you're hoping something follows the crap you watch, and it just follows by even more crap because now we get the two-on-four handicap match, which is very useless. There's some brawling 
before the match even started. <laughs> and when the match started, the club got buried in two seconds. It was a fucking bro kick. Over. Done. You might as well not even be a champion on Monday Night Raw. You just get buried. Two weeks before the biggest event of the year. You're a champion. It's terrible. But the thing was, if the club and, and Enzo and Cass were smart, they'd want to beat Cesaro and Sheamus, so it's not a triple threat. No. They just, you know, we're going to fight with each other because we're idiots. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, quick bro kick and it was over. Enzo and Cass attack everyone after, too. Sick. Moving on. Uh, Austin Aries versus Tony Neat. Tony Neat. It's basically a showcase for both, but mostly Aries heading into his championship match and WrestleMania with... Uh, Neville for the championship. Aries wins with a sick finisher, the discus five arm. It's really cool. It's almost like Okada's, uh, again, I say it every week. It's like Okada's uh, Rainmaker. Go check it out. It's almost identical. After the match, Neville comes out, and him and Aries basically cut a promo on each other, and that led to basically nothing. That's it. Cool. And we'll follow up with some more crap. Main event. Strowman versus Reigns. Just wow. to make Raw even better, let's end with Braun Strowman facing Roman Reigns. Again. Again. Terrible. This match should have been at Mania. Okay. Unreal. And there's a typical match. Reigns getting his ass on the entire match. Comes back at the end. Then we get Taker's gong hitting. Blackness. Then Undertaker appears in the ring. Just staring down Roman Reigns. And then he turns to Braun. Chokeslams Braun. So Braun gets buried already. <laughs> Way to look, make Braun look He's about terrible. to get buried by Reigns, and he gets buried by Taker. Taker turns around into a spear. And Taker, after the chokes them, looked like... I don't know if he was faking that it, like, hurt him or something. There's I don't know. back, lifting yeah. up Strowman, I guess. He turns right into... He gets right into a spear. Great. So Undertaker gets buried. Then Braun Strowman gets buried in, like, 50... In, like, 10 seconds. As Roman is walking up the ramp, he's doing Undertaker's fucking pose, which I got pissed off at. He walks back and does the little look back thing. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. If you raise your fucking arm, I'm gonna sp- I'm gonna punch Roman Reigns right in the face. Uh, and Taker sits up and throat slashes Roman to end the show. You gotta think Reigns has gotta turn heel for this match. No, he won't. He's not. They're, they're career suiciding his ass. You got two weeks until Roman Reigns' body bag is zipped up. End the story. Uh, raw rating this week I gave it a, a 1 out of 10 simply for the Kevin Owens and Jericho show that's it that's it 1 out of 10 I can't give any points to anything else nothing else mattered on Raw except maybe the firing so 1.5 out of 10 that's it that's all I got for Raw it's terrible god awful this week I was going to give it a 2 but then it loses a point five because they could have done so much better with that fully firing segment oh, yeah. like, I do, thought it was good you could have like, introduced the GM or something to do with Zayn. Like, Zayn came there, and, like, they had such a huge opportunity to p- push him in some way, and then they just didn't. No, they just buried him. Feed him to Samoa Joe. So, I'm going to give him a, I'm gonna give Rob 1.5. That's how t- – it's worst rating so far. Yeah, terrible. So, I'll move on. Blue Brand. Again, SmackDown barely survives again for, like, the third – the third or fourth week in a row, man. They They're really step stumbling it up. in the mania here. It's almost like Vince is doing it on purpose, though, man. It's so weird how all of a sudden they're just starting to sleaze off. It's because Raw's so doing so bad that Vince's like, oh, no, we got to make sure SmackDown does terrible, too. You know, barely win. Barely win. I don't know. Anyways, it opened with Styles and Daniel Bryan in the back. Styles is looking for Shane McMahon. Daniel Bryan tell, basically tells him he's on his way. AJ comes out to the ring. Talks about what he did to Shane McMahon and accepts Shane's challenge for WrestleMania. So we get in the match that I don't want to see at WrestleMania, whatever. Again, I'll, I see a lot of people's talking about, oh, this feud's good. People, to people saying, like, oh, don't sleep on this match. It's actually going to be really good. No, guys, listen to me right now. And you guys are going to come to me. I, I guarantee you, all you people listening to me right now are going to come to me after this match and go, oh, Kyle, you were right, man. That match actually sucked. It's going to suck. I guarantee you right now, I'm calling it, Styles will carry Shane McMahon the entire match. You're going to get two, like, giant spots by Shane McMahon, and you're going to be like, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. It's it's not something you haven't seen before. He's basically done every kind of giant spot ever. So, it's going to be cool, whatever. I can get behind that. But the match is just going to be Styles carrying Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon cannot, will ever not, wrestle properly. With with Styles, keep up with Styles. With Styles, one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. The sad part is that this has the best buildup of any feud, which is sad. Sad, very sad. I like the buildup. I'm not 
running down this build up. You guys listen right now. I, I don't hate the build. I just don't like that the concept is going to turn into a match. That's it. Are you going to what's going to be better? The Styles and Shane match or the Roman and Taker match? Oh god. <laughs> Greg, Shane is so generic. He's below generic. He's like you take the generic superstar from 2K17, you just run him down a little bit lower. That's where you got Shane McMahon. Yeah, but nobody does the Shane shuffle though. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, I was really expecting this week for Nakamura or Angle to step out of that limo, not fucking Heath Slater and Rhino. <laughs> God, I was honestly expecting someone better, but no, we got the useless spot of why did that was why was that even needed? Because they, I guess they wanted him to pretend like he's gonna. Why were they in a limo? Again. Did he even appear on SmackDown? When was the last time they were on TV? Two then. months. <laughs> that was and they didn't do anything. Unbelievable. Anyways. Move on. Baron Corbin is looking for Dean Ambrose after this. Daniel Bryan doesn't know where he is. Baron thinks he's going to take the night off and hit the blackjack tables. Daniel Bryan then books him in a match versus Randy Orton. Okay. It's all right. I like that. Uh, next, we get the Tag Team Championships. Usos versus American Alpha. Not sure why this happened so soon. Didn't know why. This is a really good match. Okay. Not sure why it happened so soon. This was literally a WrestleMania quality match. It felt like a WrestleMania match. Insane. I know you didn't watch it, but once you go and watch it after we're done, you know, later this weekend, you're going to come to me and be like, oh my God, why didn't they save that for that WrestleMania? The little the match or so many kickouts. It really felt like a WrestleMania match. Didn't know why they did this so soon. Again, it's going to be ruining things. They've done so many things so soon this week or this year. It's incredible. Rush, rush, rush. Yeah. Hopefully something is in is better in place for WrestleMania, hopefully. But uh, Usos beat the American Alpha for the tag titles two weeks before WrestleMania. What the fuck? This should have happened weeks ago. Why is it happening now? Maybe because they realize they're going to have so many title changes at WrestleMania, they don't want to have another one happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> they were over, too. The crowd was behind Usos this week. It was hilarious. The whole crowd was like, ooh, so like the whole match. Like, what uh, the hell? They even pulled off their face finisher at one point. Unbelievable. Maybe because people realize the heel Usos are good. I don't know. It was... Mm. And we're going to move on to something, and I wish you had gone and watched this, because it's freaking... Probably the funniest and best thing on Raw. Raw. Or on SmackDown. Um, was what The Miz and Maurice did this week. And oh my god, I was dying. Okay. They did, uh, they're teasing up to this. It, it looked legit. It showed John Cena and uh, Nikki Bella. It was like a special episode of Tota Bellas. We get a scene. So when they actually showed it, they changed the title around. It says, uh, Total <laughs> Bella Bullshit. <laughs> and it, it had started out the shit. <laughs> and it was basically Miz and Maurice. In jo it looked like, I think that was John Cena's house, but it was Nikki, it was Maurice dressed as Nikki Bella with a black wig and everything, like the whole outfit. And then the Miz was in all John Cena gear. <laughs> and uh, they were just making fun of both of them, just running them down. John Cena, like, or Miz making fun of John Cena with his house rules and stuff. And then, like, every part of the episode, it, he kept teasing to propose to Nikki, but it was something, like, pun differently. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Like, it was avoiding the question. <laughs> It was so funny. I loved it. It was so great. Wait, when you go back and watch it, you're probably going to piss your pants. Um, yeah, Greg, a spoof of uh, Total Bellas. Uh, so move on. So that was the first part. We'll get we get more later. Uh, Corbin versus uh, Randy Warner was actually a really decent match. Good showing by both Corbin and to make him look like he could compete in, at a main event level and keep up with Randy Warren. I really liked uh, how they did this. At one point in the match, Ambrose comes out from the side of the stage on top of the forklift. Like someone's driving and he's up there on the forklift. <laughs> and then he has the mic and he's uh, distracting uh, Corbin. Corbin turns around into the RKO for the win. Again, it's just, I, I like that idea too because it doesn't make Corbin look that weak. No. And it makes Randy Orton look strong going into his title match. Um, yeah, you got to have Orton looking more strong because he's <laughs> going for the top yeah. title. So Ambrose uh, gets lowered on the forklift and gets to the ring. And he accepts Corbin's challenge for WrestleMania for the IC title and then Dirty Deeds him. So, who was driving the forklift? Uh, some backstage crew guy. I don't know. I couldn't really make it out. 
Um, <laughs> but the one thing I'm I'm confused about, and hopefully it'll be uh, made next Clarified. week. Is just, right now it's just a regular match, so I'm hoping it's no holds barred. Or I, I'm gonna guess pun it's gonna intended. be yeah, pun intended next week. Uh, Greg says that was gold. Yeah, it was hilarious. Um, backstage, Orton is getting uh, interviewed, and the lights start to flicker. And this like eerie music starts going out, and the lights go out. This is really cool. You got to go back and watch this too. The lights come on, and there's all these people with lamb masks, and they look like they're dressed like Eric Rowan. They're all in the Eric Rowan green outfit, and they all just start beating the shit out of Randy Orton. Um, they hold him up. Wyatt comes into the room with this weird like cross thing, like this like almost like Mordecai looking cross. And puts it on Orton and starts doing this like ritual on him, like saying all these like gibberish words. I'm like, oh my god, this is like, this is unreal. Like, where's, I, where's broken Matt? Yeah. Um, Why says Orton changed him, and Abigail now lives through Bray Wyatt, and he's even more stronger than ever thanks to Randy. And then starts singing the you got the whole. Oh, he brought that yeah. back. <laughs> That's uh, great. It would that was like that was such a good and well done segment. Uh, Greg says Ambrose will face his end of days at WrestleMania, and the Orton and Wyatt segment was amazing. Yeah, that was great. That was the production value of S- SmackDown is just out of this world, man. Beats Raw way out of the water. It's it's crazy how different both of them are. It's crazy how they're actually getting you excited for a Randy Orton Bray Wyatt match. Mm-hmm. Um, move on. Van Dango versus John Cena. Why? I don't know, but again. <laughs> Van Dango comes out with Tyler Breeze, and now Tyler Breeze is dressed as Nikki Bella. What? <laughs> yeah, he's in full Nikki Bella outfit with the the oh my with the stuffed bra. <laughs> no wonder I was wondering why Michael Chow was saying free Tyler Breeze. Yeah. I guess this is what <laughs> this that was, means. And then it's not like she she's already getting roasted enough on the episode of Total Bella bullshit. Now she's getting roasted by Tyler Breeze. This whole episode of SmackDown is just roasting Nikki Bella and John Cena. That's fantastic. Um. But what a waste of Fandango and Tyler Breeze. Unreal. John Cena, it was like a two-second squash. Nikki Bella came out and, like, confronted Tyler Breeze and speared him, too. And then John Cena gave the five moves. Wait, and to Wait, Nikki Bella speared Tyler Breeze. Okay, so the start of this match, John Cena gives him the five moves of doom. And then uh, wins. And then Tyler Breeze gets in the ring. And Nikki Bella comes out and spears Tyler Breeze. <laughs> Wow. And it was two seconds squash. That's it. Cool. Moving on. Why was that even a match though in the first place? It to showcase the burial of Van Dango <laughs> and Tyler Breeze. This, this was a guy that beat Chris Jericho three years ago at WrestleMania. <laughs> Craig, that'd be an interesting DVD, the rise and fall of Tyler Breeze. Mm-mm-mm, gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, next, we got Carmella versus Becky Lynch. Ooh. With Natty on commentary, which again, oh my God. with her commentary, it takes so much away from the match. Was it cringe? She wasn't on it long, I'll just say that. Natty finally gets off and it starts attacking Carmella. Then Mickey James comes out and starts attacking. Then Alexa Bliss comes out and starts attacking. And there's just all out brawl with all these women attacking everybody. And then it ends with Alexa giving a straight right hand to Mickey James. And then her just fall. It's like the freaking WMD man. And Mickey just goes down. She she sells so good. Mickey James is a perfect seller. And then Alexa is standing tall with all the other divas down. Really? In the middle of the ring with a title up. What a champion looking strong. Finally. Heaven for wow. Raw, take some fucking notes. <laughs> Unreal. Going into a match with five other women and the champions the one looking, looking strong. strong. That's Love it. it. And following that greatness, we get another episode of Total Bella Bullshit. <laughs> and it is John Cena giving a tour of his house, house just ripping the whole rule thing that John Cena has. If you ha- don't know what that means, guys, Go if you haven't watched Total Bella, John Cena has these, like, rules, specific rules that people must follow in his house because B- Brian and, Nick- and Bree stayed over at his house for a couple of weeks to help Nikki with her rehab and – <laughs> John Cena's got all these rules. He got to like dress up for dinner once a week in like suits and stuff. He's just got all these ridiculous rules. So Miz was just ripping him apart, and Maurice is just ripping Nikki Bella apart. It's just so hilarious. <laughs> More teasing of the proposing to Nikki. Oh my god, it's gonna they're gonna propose at WrestleMania. It's gonna happen. So was this segment like does this get segment of the year? This does, I think for sure. It's a leading candidate. <laughs> Greg says two paws has more charisma than Natty. Not gonna disagree. Unreal. Uh, 
So we're showing Styles is waiting in the parking lot for Shane McMahon still. So we're doing this for two weeks in a row. Um, again, the limo shows up. Out comes Rhino and Slater for some reason. Don't know. Styles are confused. I was confused. <laughs> then they pan back to the ring. Then Shane McMahon's music hits. And he's on his way to the ring. Then they're showing Styles in the back. And Styles is uh, told by Renee Young that, oh, Shane McMahon's actually in the ring looking for you. Wouldn't you hear his music out there? How does he not know? <laughs> I don't know. I know it's they have to act, but whatever. Shane starts talking about last week, invites Styles out to the ring, basically calling him out. Styles comes out and tells Shane, look, calm down. Uh, Styles says, I know where you're coming from, and I just want to be a man about it. Then come into that ring, say you're sorry, face to face, and shake your hand. Styles, be a nice guy about it. As soon as Styles gets in the ropes, Shane McMahon jumps him. It starts brawling on him. So we get a uh, ruthless aggression Shane coming yeah. out. And man, does Styles, is Styles ever going to have to carry this? And he carried the brawl. He carried this brawl. If you guys want to see a glimpse of what their match is going to be like, look at this brawl. Styles had to carry and frickly had to sell a lot of shit. I told everyone so. It's going to happen. Shane cannot wrestle. Cannot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he made the sick giant elbow drop on SmackDown this week where he put him through the table. Like, we've seen that before. We've seen it last year with Taker. Fuck, we have to see it again. He has like the same four yeah. big spots he does. We're going to see it at Mania. And you're going to see it how bad it is at WrestleMania. We're going to see the two big spots at WrestleMania. I'm calling it right now. Styles will carry the rest of the match. Also, Shane tries to cut a, a, a promo at the end of this, and he got cut out again, pointing at the WrestleMania sign. Of course, he pointed at the WrestleMania sign. Well, so SmackDown got cut off again. Yeah. Literally, but he, he finished it, and it cut off. Unreal. Wow. Um, yeah, Greg says the, the brawl was horrendous on Shane's part, and Shane is a spot dummy. He is. It's like Mick Foley. Yeah. Uh, so SmackDown this week, I gave it a 6 out of 10. A I lot guess. of it came from Miz and Maurice and Corbin and Orton and Wyatt. There's a lot of good parts to SmackDown this week. And I can see, I like again, I can get behind the Shane and Styles feud because it's really intense. So I'm giving it a good six this week. I got to give it an NA because I, I unfortunately missed it this week. But from what you're telling me, there was actually some good stuff that I need to go back and watch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, SmackDown again beats Raw. What else is new? SmackDown, did it get a little bit better from the last couple weeks? Because the last couple a little weeks bit. have been pretty bad. Just a little bit. Not like WrestleMania quality, but a little bit. Yeah, like we said. And it's hard to judge that because they built so well for their single branded pay per It's hard to judge what they can build for WrestleMania because it's almost the same. If not a little better, just by a small piece, a little better. But two weeks away from WrestleMania, it's just like, wow, what are we getting right now? Why know. do I care about most of these matches? I don't know. It's it's tough, and we'll have a lot to talk about next That's week. That's why their card is garbage. Mm -hmm. Our card is better. <laughs> Maybe we should call up. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll have a better card. <laughs> Roman Reigns this, Roman Reigns that. Mm -hmm. um, Sprinkle a little Roman here. Yeah. Speaking of cards, it's that part of the show, guys. We're not going to do uh, our list of ten. We don't have WWE headlines. We went over that in the beginning of the show. So we're getting to that second part of the show here. And I was entitled WrestleMania 33 Rebooked. So guys, get ready for the green light. Give me the green light. Oh, yeah. Cause I'm ready to go. Let's have a good time. Let's go. What you waiting for? You only got one life. One life. And we gonna live it up. So give me the green light. Give it to me. Cause I'm ready to go. That's right. Welcome to the second part of the show where we will rebook. WrestleMania 33 and give you our revised card. So basically, guys, what we're gonna do is we have we took the WrestleMania card and basically we're gonna revise some matches, if not all matches, how we would have booked it and what makes more sense for us. And I think you guys will agree with us out there about these. Um, we think some fuse should have been built better. And, and we'll some go feuds over should that. have not been built at all yeah. into different feuds. So, yeah, that's just part of the show. And we decided to do that for this week's podcast so we can talk about it and just focus mainly on the card at hand next week for the lowdown in Orlando. So, how are we going to do this here? The is... tweets first. Huh? Oh, the tweets. tweets. I forgot about your tweets out there. <laughs> Craig, make WrestleMania glorious again. 
I wish. To make it glorious. What do you mean again? Was it glorious before? One WrestleMania, maybe. Anyways, I asked you guys on Twitter, if you could change one match on the Mania card, what would it be, and what would you replace it with? So again, your tweets out there right now. First one comes from Luke Talkinson at Laughing Shovel on Twitter. I know what's about WB. I'd change Undertaker versus Reigns to Cena versus Undertaker, and then have Cena cheat to win, not stealing anything from Adam uh, Adam the Blampied at all, whoever that is. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I like that idea, and we're gonna in ours. I don't know about Cena cheating to win though. Mm-mm. That's not really a typical John Cena thing to do at this point. Nope. Um, Moving on, Glorious Greg. He puts, if I could change one WrestleMania match, it would be Brock versus Goldberg for the Universal title and replace it with Kevin Owens versus Jericho fighting in a title-for-title title match. That would be much better than Oldberg versus Lesnar. 100% agree with you. We agree that. with our Twitter fan of the month for yeah. March. Yeah, thank you, Greg. I forgot to give you a shout-out there. My bad. Next week comes from Casey Salvis. That's Salvis94. The only way I care about Reigns versus Undertaker is if Reigns turns heel. If not, he will be booed out of the stadium. Yes. What I... else does he go on to say? <laughs> he says, instead of Shane versus Styles, have Nakamura versus AJ. Match would be amazing, and best part, Nakamura would not be on that garbage show Raw with the picture of the hashtag dumpster fire. <laughs> We debated about that too. I just think it's too soon for Nakamura. Yeah, the best change of the card would be Roman not to be on WrestleMania at all. <laughs> and it would be amazing. <laughs> Believe that, Roman. <laughs> oh God, Casey. Oh, you crack us up, man. Crack us up. Next tweet comes from Tyler Jones. On this oh, finally, Tyler, Tyler Jones. On this He's back. Too. He's back. Fucking all of them, he says. <laughs> but like two. Top one would be Owens and Jericho title for title. Then get Owens gives U.S. to Joe, corporate Dom. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like that a lot. I like that. I really like that idea. Next week comes from, if I'm saying this right, Samir Gemeyer at Real Samir G on Twitter. He puts, I want to make Corbin versus Ambrose for icy title into a triple threat match with adding Luke Harper. You know what that means? Hmm. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said Ty had two things. Uh, he said he had t- two matches he would change. Did he not put the other one? I don't know if he put the other one. I don't have the other one here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, Sam Aguirre, Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but I like that idea. I, get trouble th- I think it's too late now. He would have to have been incorporated into this feud yeah. uh, earlier. Because they've kept Luke Harper off TV for God knows what reason the last like month. He, he was actually getting... A push and momentum. People were getting behind him, and then they just did nothing with him. Yeah, you're right. Craig says the revival of Tyler Jones? Question mark. Well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> it's not really a tweet, but who trans Superman puts? Uh, oh, I can only choose one. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand completely what you meant by that. <laughs> I would change the whole card as well. Uh, maybe actually in a couple matches. That's cute. But uh, Michael Chow. I'm Michael Chow TV. Guys, he does his own podcast. Go check him out on Spreaker as well. He does his own uh, WWE-related podcast. He'll also be doing uh, podcasts about more things in the future and, and leading up to a YouTube well. channel. Giveaways. And he does giveaways too as our I won. Our co-host here, Corporate Cap. He won. Thank you, Michael Chow, again. Yep. His tweet. Oldberg versus Roy Lesnar. He's got the emoticon of basically the Daniel Bryan thing going no. Move Universal title to Owens versus Jericho match. Move Goldberg to Andre the Giant Mora Battle Royal. <laughs> and create Lesnar versus The Rock. I actually thought that was going to happen last year. The Rock hasn't been anywhere. Last so. year at this time, I'm like, oh man, next year is going to be Brock Lesnar versus The Rock. Rock has been nowhere to be seen. Yeah. But I would have loved that. I think I could have got behind that. Maybe next uh, year. Unless they go off with that plan we're getting the next year. Yeah. <laughs> Next we comes from uh, Prince Jones, Prince Homo Jones, at TWFS Prince Jones. Kevin Owens versus Jericho, he puts. Okay. You would change that. Change to what, though? I'm guessing he would uh, make that the universal title match. I'm just going to say that. Uh, next tweet comes from Colin, at Gemma NU1. 
It can only be one. Then I'll change Lesnar versus Goldberg. I would have KO versus a returning Balor for the Universal title. Mm. Ooh, interesting. Never got his there. rematch, so. Um. Oh, I think I missed a tweet from. Uh, oh no, that's, uh, I read that tweet from Casey. But I think I still have a couple more tweets here because I put out another tweet. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, some uh, Juggy Badass at Azazel underscore YT. The Raw is Reigns women's match for the title. <laughs> <laughs> Why the actual fuck do we need these cringe multi-person matches? Exactly. We 100% agree with you there. Both women's matches. Yeah. Why? Taking yeah. so much away from these girls. <laughs> Prince Jones gave us a, a sarcastic tweet. Change G Owens and Jericho to Eugene versus the Great Khali. <laughs> wow. Main event quality match right there. I don't think he was being sarcastic at all. No. <laughs> and then Glorious Greg Lastly, I would replace Styles and Shane with Styles and Nakamura, obviously. But we know that I think it's a little bit too early for Nakamura. Maybe Draft. Draft seems like the right spot for Nakamura, like a surprise draft pick. Um... Although I would love Nakamura Raw after WrestleMania. That would just be the biggest pop ever. Problem is ever. that he'd be on Raw. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big part. Um, so, it, since it's the Raw after WrestleMania, are they going to have the SmackDown after WrestleMania too? Like with the same I don't know. That's, again, that's going to be interesting. I think well, it's in Florida too. Is it going to be like the same place? I think so. I'll have to look that up. If you guys that know out there, insane. let us know. They um, have two days. Other than that, let's get into it. Our get WrestleMania it. 33... Revised card, and uh, you'll read a match, and I'll read a match. How about we do that? Okay, so uh, go to number one. Uh, I want to start down here. We'll start from the bottom up, start okay. down here, work up. Okay, so match we're not changing is Neville versus Austin Aries for the Cruiserweight Championship. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, Neville versus Aries is going to be such a good match. You don't feel the need to change it. I think we don't need to change it at all. Um, so that's one good thing WWE did with one match. Yeah, I, there's people out there saying it should be a ladder match. You're putting, you're going a little bit overboard with that a little bit. Just these guys are fantastic wrestlers. Uh, as it is, they don't need a ladder match yeah. stipulation. I think it's just gonna be a really good cruiserweight match. And they've never faced each other before, so it's gonna be a cool match. Yeah, I like it. Uh, next match, we got the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Obviously, we keep that because it's always gonna be a WrestleMania match. Um, the participants. Or what we changed, and we got some interesting names in here. So uh, here keep out. your uh, keep your ears open here for this one. T.J. Perkins, Noam Da, Noam Da, <laughs> Mustafa Ali, D. Brian Kendrick, Akira Tozawa, Araya Davari, Cedric Alexander if he's healthy enough, Jack Gallagher, Rich Swan, and Tony Nese. So you got the plethora of cruiserweights there. Add it into the Memorial Battle Royal. I mean, what else are you gonna do with them? Makes more sense. Vandango, Tyler Breeze, Apollo Cruz, Dolph Ziggler, Zack Ryder as a surprise, I guess, uh, from injury yeah. return. Yeah. Mojo Rawley. That'd be interesting to see if these guys go at it. Um, Roman Reigns. <laughs> this is where I'd like to see Roman Reigns. I think everyone can agree with us right now that no man games deserves to be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. <laughs> doesn't deserve to be anywhere else on the card. Unbelievable. Um, but we have him here because... This looks like it's going to be a pre-show type match, but you know what? Since they, since we love, since we know that he likes Roman Reigns, doesn't it be number one? We're giving this, 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 the, you know, this little shit double duty tonight. We'll get into that later in the card, okay? You'll see. You'll see, guys. Stay tuned. Uh, Rusev, okay. Uh, I heard he's injured. Yeah, he is. It's sad. So that's actually sad. Man, the guy's going to miss WrestleMania now. That sucks. Yeah. So like we said, uh, th this is bar <laughs> like. If injuries war didn't take place for yeah. certain guys, like uh, Cedric Alexander, Zack Ryder. Yeah, Sami Zayn. Yep. Good spot for him. Mark Henry, your boy. Yeah. Big show. He's not going to face Shaquille O'Neal. I keep hearing now, actually, lately, that it's actually not going to happen. It might even be pushed to next year's WrestleMania. <laughs> Great. Uh, so it's more likely Big Show will be in Andre Mo Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Defense the return title. of Shelton Benjamin into this. Uh, main roster call-up of Ty Dillinger. Perfect 10. That'd be great. Samoa Joe, and the returning Finn Balor. It just makes sense to stack the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Make it more prestigious. Make yeah. you care about it. Because there's so many of these guys right now that have no feuds where it could actually make a difference. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the last match, the Cruiser match, we'd have Neville retain. So, interesting yeah. there. Uh, for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale, we'd have Zayn, Joe, Balor, and Benjamin in the final four. It's a great final four. Joe screws Balor out of the win. 
Balor gets payback on Joe by distracting him while help while Zayn helping him to pull out and get the underdog win. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. I like Zayn winning gives, that too. Gives Sammy Zayn sense. gives him a good push. You know. Gives him the underdog story, which he has yet to get. So yeah, and he, it looked kind of look like he was supposed to get this year, but that changed. So what better way than having it in the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal? Interesting. Next match is what we would do is very very interesting and it's I'm reading this. It's a it's a yeah you're reading it. it's a multi woman <laughs> match, but but it actually one that would be better and for people to get more interested in. For the first time ever, we would do a women's Money in the Bank ladder match yes. going back to WrestleMania where it should be, not on its own stupid pay per view. Yep, where it originated. The participants would be Sasha Banks, Alicia Fox, Nia Jax, Natalia, Carmella. Mickey James, Nikki Bella, and Becky Lynch. Interesting. I like that. And obviously, I would say, as I'm wearing the Sasha Banks sweater right now that I just got from WWE Shop, new <laughs> new sweater, Sasha Banks would win. Yeah. That's what I would say. <laughs> I could go with my bias pick, Carmella, but no. Out of all this, I'd say Sasha Banks would be making the most sense out of all of them. I mean, it could come down to even Becky Lynch and Sasha on top of the ladder to, even, to make it even more of a prestigious feeling but, but, but then uh, it gives sasha like that heel turn when yeah. it eventually happens she can cash in on bailey and if you can have these multi-woman matches why not do something better with them not these crappy fatal four-way or whatever the smackdown woman's one's gonna be we're supposed to be getting some you? surprise entrance but who knows yeah. um so yeah, we'll move on and the Miz and maurice will be having a well Mar maurice won't be in the match but Miz will be having a match but it'll be for shane mcmahon and in Shane McMahon's corner will be Daniel Bryan. Now, the stipulation with this match, if Miz loses, he leaves SmackDown. If Shane loses, Daniel Bryan has to resign as SmackDown Live GM. This makes a lot of sense going back into the Miz and Daniel Bryan feud that's been building for a long time here. And Miz teasing Daniel Bryan by doing his, uh, his wrestling moves in the ring, teasing him that he can't wrestle anymore. What better way to have a match like this then? Have Shane face the Miz. Yep. And basically, Daniel Bryan has sh is fighting inside of Shane McMahon kind of thing. Yeah, and I think they could even do a spot if they want to where Daniel Bryan hits uh, – uh, what's it, this kick called? Uh, the knee plus. Yeah, the knee plus maybe at one point here. They can probably do something like that. And I feel like the buildup for this feud would have been great too. It would have been great. It would have been so been good. Great. I would have been so much interested into this. And then we would pick Shane McMahon with the winner and Miz leaves SmackDown and heads over to Raw. I think that's a good idea. So I really like that match. And uh, the other match we didn't change because it just makes so much sense is Baron Corbin versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. The only difference is we would make it either a no disqualification or no holds barred. Some pun, kind of, pun intended. Yeah, some kind of match like that where it's just all out brawl around, around the whole arena. And we would say uh, Baron Corbin would win the Intercontinental Championship. Yep. So that's one and only one of two good things that they have built for this card. Yep. So there's two matches there we wouldn't change. Get into the next match. And it's basically one that they haven't changed or really hasn't been announced. But we have a stipulation for it. We have American Alpha versus the Usos in a two out of three falls match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Um, this would be a really good match. Um, after the match, or after American Alpha win, the title's back. Now the Usos are champion. We would actually we would have said that American Alpha wouldn't have oh, lost to the Usos. Wouldn't have lost to the Usos. They come into this match as champion and yep. retain. The Broken Hardys come out after the match, setting up a future feud with American Alpha. What better way to introduce the Broken Hardys into the WWE than have a straight title feud like they deserve with American Alpha? They can do so much with that. Introduce them to the yeah. Alphas of America. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't even need to have the Broken – you can have play the Broken Hardys as heel. We don't even need to be, them to be They're heel. They're just tweeners. They're just tweeners. They it, 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 it works so well. Um, but the American Alpha Usos match, as we've seen on SmackDown, they could do a great two out of three falls match. Yeah, I think it would be really, really good. And, I mean, they're clearly the only two tag teams they give a shit about on SmackDown. Yeah. The rest of them, they don't even deserve to be on the card because none of them have done anything for the last three months. Yeah, see, the Alphas of America. You shall it's be great. rendered obsolete and be deleted. I feel bad for American Alpha because they probably get booed in a, in a feud with Broken Hardys. They probably, probably would. 
Uh, we'll move on. Move on to the next match. Oh, yeah. And I want to talk about this match. We would have my girl, Alexa Bliss. And I forgot to put the little C there no, for champion. Yeah. It's okay. She would still be the champion going into this match against the returning Naomi yep. in her hometown of Orlando. All healed up from her injuries. But the thing would be that Alexa would never have lost the title to Naomi at Elimination Chamber. Yep. So Alexa would still have the title, get a dirty, you know, cheap win against Naomi to retain it at Elimination Chamber. Yep. And then, unfortunately, I mean, obviously I want Alexa to win. But for the podcast sake, Naomi would win and have her mm. moment in her hometown of Orlando. Yep. And finally win her first women's championship. I think that would have been probably one of the biggest pops of the night. Yep. For Naomi to win her first championship in that Orlando. They were again, they they jumped the gun. I love how hey, OW jumps the gun a lot. They did a lot in the last six months. They've jumped the gun a lot with a lot of things. So again, we would have had Naomi not win it at Elimination Chamber and finally win her first championship at WrestleMania in her hometown. Why is WWE not see that and do that? I don't understand. It doesn't and, make any sense. And why can't they have a one-on-one -on -one match? Yeah. One-on-one -on -one makes more sense. They don't need everyone else. Everyone else can be in that. Then that's where you put everyone into the Money to Bank ladder match. You know, makes more sense to us. Move on. And it's AJ Styles' match. As we said before, Shane was going to be in the match with The Miz. Where do we put Styles? First, the, the new Hall of Famer, Kurt Angle. As a retirement match for yeah. Kurt Angle? And a lot of people want to see Nakamura in Styles. I think that's probably going to be WrestleMania 34, to be honest. That's probably going to be the key matchup next year. But as a retirement match for Kurt Angle, and it may be leading into the GM spot, what better way to have it with AJ Styles? That's going to be a really pure, 100% wrestling technician kind of match. I, I, a lot of people get behind that. That could probably be one of the matches of the night for look, sure. Look at what they did on TNA. Yeah. And I do think... Uh, Kurt Angle, but he wanted to put over AJ Styles. Not like he needs to be put over, but it'll be a very, very close matchup with AJ Styles beating Kurt Angle in this matchup. I feel like it would at least be like a 15, 20 minute match. Yeah. And we do agree, Greg. Bailey should have been champ going into WrestleMania, or not going to WrestleMania. And we'll, we'll get into WrestleMania. That. And we'll get into that. So, yeah, AJ Styles facing Kurt Angle. That'd be an epic match. Next match, we would have the. The triple threat for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship just makes sense to be in a triple threat because with Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt as the champion. And what, and and what they've done with Luke Harper, they include him so much in the feud and they just suddenly drop him. doesn't make any sense. So I think they, I think it would be a great triple threat match. I think they could have done a great build up with all three of those guys. Mm -hmm. The Wyatt family kind of like imploding from within. And you know what's weird? It's, it's like they're almost still doing it because they Harper cut a promo this week again too. And it was on Bray Wyatt. I don't want because he's facing him next week one on one before WrestleMania. So Harper is facing Wyatt next week. But still, why could you incorporate him if you're not going to put him in the match? I have no idea. And is Eric Rowan coming back? Because I've heard know. rumors There's, of him I've coming back. With that too. He's teasing, and he, he released an eerie video on his Twitter of him dragging a body, and apparently it's Sister Abigail. And apparently he took. Apparently the word is that he took her out of the Wyatt compound before Randy Orton burned it down. Interesting. That's an interesting. Sp twist yeah but we'll see and we would have bray wyatt retaining the wwe title because he needs to finally be put over mm -hmm. especially at a big pay-per-view like that and retain his title and become the new face of fear 100 yeah, percent, we agree uh bray wyatt he needs to he's the new face of fear it's basically all like like what he's done in the last month is incredible and probably the best work out of bray wyatt we've ever seen he's finally getting his chance he needs to retain at wrestlemania 100 percent I think Randy Orton should know that too. Yeah, I think he he wants he's the one that wants to put Bray Wyatt over, which is incredible. Um, we're gonna move on. <laughs> a triple Threat Tag Team Matches basically look like it's gonna happen at WrestleMania, but we've included a stipulation to this. They made it a TLC Tag Team Match Triple Threat. No, nope. Fatal Four nope. Way. Fatal Four Way. Who am I missing? Oh, the New Day. Okay, sorry, my bad. Fatal Four Way. So we're including the New Day. They're not the stupid hosts and not going to wrestle. They're actually going to wrestle. We're going to have uh, the New Day, the Club, Endzone Cast, and Cesaro and Sheamus. Fatal Four Way TLC match for the Raw Tag Team Championships. That's how you get people excited. Yeah, bringing back the nostalgic feel of back at like WrestleMania 17 with the, the Hardys, the Dudleys, and uh, Edge and Christian. Edge and Christian. They can do something along the lines of that. New Day are still your longest reigning tag team champions going into this match. So they never lost it, which we thought back in like November, December, these guys were going to hold the titles all the way up until WrestleMania like they should have done. 
and establish himself as that dominant of champions, make him the longest reigning tag team champions, and no one's going to be able to beat their record forever, man. That's going to be the longest streak, or maybe later in life they do something like that. But no, they um, had to break it like no, right after. It. Yeah. Uh, so they're the champions going into this match, and the winners we would pick are Cesaro and Sheamus. This new build of this tag team has gotten a lot more over and a lot more better since they first started. Since uh, we had the, the best of seven or yeah, worst the best of seven, of seven series. series. Uh, but yes, the day of new, Greg, um, going into this match with the titles and then losing it to Cesaro and Sheamus. But Greg says the club should finally win at WrestleMania. You could go, you could make an argument for any of them, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, Enzo and Cass, you know, it sucks. Everyone's waiting for their first championship too. I but... feel like they're going to win it at SummerSlam when it's back in Brooklyn. Yeah. I, I think like if you're trying to make Cesaro and Sheamus more established in the tag team division, they need to win the titles here. I feel it, like Cesaro and Sheamus will get a huge pot for winning. Yeah, I think it would be good. Um, next match, you want to do the honors, sir? Mm, no, I'll leave you to that one. Hey, look who's tuning in. Michael Chow TV is here, and I'm ready to book it in, man. Oh, great. All right, you're a little, a little late there. We have uh, five matches left there, Michael okay. Chow. You do number matches. six. I'll let you do number six, and I'll do five and four. Okay. Uh, Michael Chow, listen to this. For number six, for the Raw Women's Championship, we would just have it one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, no multi-woman matches. Shocker. One-on-one. -on -one. Charlotte versus Bailey. For the women's championship, and Charlotte still undefeated at pay per view, leading in this match, which she should have been. Not the stupid fast lane bullcrap that we've seen this past year. Unbelievable. Unreal. And she would still be the champion. She'd still be champion going into this match. Her and Bailey can have an epic match at WrestleMania 1 1. And then finally have Bailey win her first Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania, like it should be done. If you're breaking a streak that long and that prestigious, it should be broken at a pretty major pay-per-view. Right? Like, WrestleMania, it, just, it made more sense, WrestleMania. Fastlane made zero no sense. Shit about Fastlane. And you, you just buried Charlotte, whatever undefeated streak you were talking about, with her right then. Just, you just killed. Killed that everything. whole year of momentum she had. Unbelievable. Ah, I just did it. Such dirty. just loves to jump the gun. So much shit. Why would they have made Bailey champion already? It just makes no sense. Yeah, and now going into, I just don't care about that woman's title match that's coming next, next Sunday. I don't it, care. It, it gives you not, it makes you not want to be invested in anything. Yeah. Um. So, I'll let you read the next two matches there, sir. Yeah. So we've got Triple H with Stephanie McMahon at ringside versus Seth Rollins with Mick Foley. Obviously, Ooh. this would be putting the whole Seth Rollins injury out the window. This yeah. would, if it wouldn't have happened. Hypothetically, uh, and if Triple H wins, he becomes the new Raw GM. If Rollins wins, Foley remains the Raw GM. So very, very interesting. Um, to call stipulation here. Um, so you're gonna have Seth Rollins, uninjured Seth Rollins, going in with Triple H. You can even make a uh, no DQ if you want to, or unsanctioned as well. This match, could, this feud, could be so heated still that it's gonna be unsanctioned again. Um, so you got Stephen McMahon in the corner of Triple H. They can do their, their their entrance thing again like they did uh, two years ago uh, or last year. It's last year. Uh, yeah, Seth Rollins and McFoley. McFoley's job being right in the line, not getting fired like he was this past Raw, and just this was the way to do it. Triple H will become the new GM if he wins. Foley remains the GM if if Rollins wins, and we pick Seth Rollins to win in this match. But uh, if so, they could uh, have Foley get fired. The Raw after. So you can remember, I'm still the boss. You're still fired. <laughs> right? And have something with, or maybe Foley comes back after his what, uh, knee surgery. Yeah. Like, I don't forget what, what surgery Michael happened. Chow putting six months of the Charlotte streak screwing up the women's division to end at the crap fest fast lane. Yes. Very Read. sad. Very, very sad. Raw logic, Greg. Yes, it is raw logic. Speaking of raw logic, this match wouldn't happen at Fastlane either. We would have Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. Yeah, so Roman Reigns time. pulling double duty. Okay. Double duty here. He would probably be eliminated really early in Andre Jart Memorial Battle Royal. Just fine. Or by Joe or somebody. Or, like, you know, he could, he could be, like, banged up in the back and be like, no, you know what? You're still – Fully like or Stephanie, or, you know, you're still gonna have a match. Yeah, they're gonna make him seem banged up, and he's still gonna go out there and overcome. Yeah. And or maybe Braun jumps him in the back, and then Ro Ro Reigns comes out and you know challenges Strowman. I know this is, really doesn't really happen at WrestleMania, but comes out and and calls out Braun Strowman. 
Or maybe we can even like call an audible here and say both of them were in the the battle royal. Yeah. Maybe Strowman was in there, and they eliminated each other. Yeah. Or something. Who knows? But either way, Ro- unfortunately, we would see Roman Reigns going over on Braun Strowman, mm-hmm. and finally winning or de- <laughs> Braun Strowman's undefeated streak would be uh, erased at WrestleMania by Roman yeah. Reigns. Not fast lane. Again, they'd be jumping the gun once again on a streak being broken, just like they did with Undertaker. Just like they did with Charlotte, just like they're doing with Str- with Strowman, that match should have never happened at Fastlane. There should have been a. It's it, it's still kind of building. They had a match this week, and why not continue with this? It's such a him. yeah, and it's just such a good build. Have Roman Reigns finally overcome Braun Strowman? Vince wants Reigns to look that strong. Why not have it done like that? It makes so much sense. Vince. This is the road you have to take to make him the next John Cena. You're doing it all wrong now. You're shoving him down our throats. Cena overcame everything to become the top star. He was never shoved down our throats. It doesn't make any sense. That match should have not happened at Fastlane. WrestleMania should have been the culminating match. It had an epic match, have Reigns overcome everything, and finally beat Strowman. You might even get Roman Reigns cheered. You might. Because you finally end this big monster's undefeated streak. It just yeah. makes sense. God. And Vince loves both these guys. I don't know why he didn't want to do it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Anyways, we'll move on. And to the match, uh, I would love it to be – it has main event written all of it, but we're going to have it in a co-main event because there's another match we would want in the main event, which we'll get into. Uh, Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho for both Universal Championship and United States Championship. So this match would be for both titles. I think a, a lot, lot of you guys agree with you. With gra- What's that? I think a lot of people wanted this yeah, match. Yeah, a lot of people agreed with this, and they teased it. About a month ago, and I think it should have happened. Um, but Owens and Jericho, for sure, for both titles, would have been. Uh, can you imagine the feud and the build for this? Can you imagine the stare down in the middle of the ring and the referee holding both titles up? And the crowd is just split down the freaking middle, man, because the WrestleMania crowd loves Owens. Mm-hmm. Half of them chanting for Owens, half of them chanting for Y2J. Un freaking believable. The, the build for this, the feud has been so good. The hype for both titles. And we'd pick Owens for sure to win it, obviously, because Jericho going into his tour with Fozzie. Mm-hmm. And what better way to ascend Owens into the top level, more than he already is, than have both Universal and United States Championship. He could rock both titles. He has the presence to do that. And finally make him look good, which they, had, they hadn't done his whole Universal title run. Exactly. And so- even I like Tyler Jones' prediction where he said that maybe Owens gives the U.S. title to Samoa, Samoa Joe. Joe and, and they have this whole faction made, thing yeah. going on. Uh, but either way, it just made sense for Owens to win both titles yeah. here. Michael Shaw puts a Raw vs. SmackDown match at WrestleMania. Strowman vs. Corbin because they have never hyped or brought up the fact that Corbin single-handedly eliminated Strowman at the Royal Rumble. Hmm. I feel like they're saving Raw vs. SmackDown matches for Survivor Series. Yeah. I feel like they're not going to have them anywhere else. And yeah, right now you couldn't have those two guys face because they're both heels. Yeah. You know WWE will never do a heel vs. heel match. Yeah. Ever. They hate that. XXX. No, 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 no. No, no, no two heels. Oh, okay, have yeah, that. Because one of them has to get cheered. Someone's got to get cheered here. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get Roman Reigns cheered, but he's getting booed. <laughs> Anyways, Owens versus Jericho, title for title. Be a great main event, but there's another match we think that's going to be a main event. It should be main event quality, but you can have this co main event and people will go absolutely nuts. And as a special cool down match <laughs> for this, we would do Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, career. Versus career match. Yes, you heard that right. I know there's the current rumors of Goldberg getting signed to another one-year contract, and I don't want to talk about that because that just drives me nuts. Um, this should be Goldberg fading off into the sunset. Yeah, this should be his last match. Should be Brock versus Goldberg, and not a squash. Please no. You got to cool down the crowd for the main event, which we're going to talk about. Um, this should be the the cool down kind of match, and a lot of people can get behind it, but no title at all. This 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 feud, this match does not need a title because the feud builds itself to be that good. You <laughs> look all the way back at November Survivor Series with Goldberg squashing Lesnar. Then you look at the Royal Rumble, what Goldberg did to Lesnar, and you, you, you want Brock wants that retrib- retribution. He wants to be the one to win this match. And to then to actually have a better match, you need to have a WrestleMania 20 and actually have a full match. So, Goldberg versus Roy Lesnar, yes, Greg. And have... Sorry, and have Brock get desperate, say like all, or have Heyman say he'll put his career on the line for this yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe like Lesnar says it, and Heyman's trying to like back 
Lesnar off, and Lesnar just shrugs it off and says, no, no, my career is on the line. It would make it more intense because you know one of them is done after this. Yeah, and it makes sense because who wants to see anything beyond this? No one. This match ends at WrestleMania. This feud dies at WrestleMania. So why not have it career versus career? Yeah, and, and it just makes Goldberg sense. Goldberg doesn't need to wrestle anymore. We've already had the Goldberg farewell tour. I think if he goes for another year, he's going to end up getting booed. Yeah. Like, they're going to – the crowd's going to end up turning on him after this, especially with the, what they've done with him winning the Universal title. Yeah. It just makes no sense. <laughs> Michael Chow, TV, throw those two part-timers in the pre-show. Fuck those two. Hashtag corporate Michael Chow. <laughs> Oh God! As much as I love to put it in the pre-show, Michael Chow, for not... the casuals that tune yeah. into WrestleMania every year, you got to give them a match that they're gonna want to so, watch. I think that'd be a decent cooldown kind of match. And I can't really say cooldown, but a decent match in between what we have for main event. So Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, uh, career versus career match with Brock going over and finally being Goldberg, hopefully lasting longer than five minutes, um, and then. <laughs> Just, that's it. Go, what a way Brock loves to be in the spotlight. Have him beat Goldberg at WrestleMania. You can get behind that. And then, Why not? And then getting into this main event. The main event. The big main event, which should have happened. I've been talking about it for a year and wanting it to happen. There's the tease of it happening. John Cena's pissed off. He also took a shoot promo at it. The one SmackDown. The Undertaker versus John Cena. So this should be main event. It writes itself. Like, you, you don't even really need to build it up. Everybody wants to see that match. Taker's last match needs to be versus John Cena. It needs to happen. Why doesn't Taker want to put over Cena? I don't understand. Does he think Cena's really on his way out? It doesn't matter. And Cena's he wants to he'd rather put out. over Roman fucking Reigns. No man gains. Yeah, and that's the reason. If you guys don't know, The Undertaker is the one that wanted to face Roman Reigns this year. This is not Vince. This is not Dunn. There's not anyone back there that wants this match to happen. It's solely The Undertaker that wants... He says he wants to face Reigns because he thinks he can put him over. You cannot put over Roman Reigns. It's too late, dead man. He is already far gone being, trying to be put over. Body now, bag has been zipped up. Now you, you want him to wrestle you, so you're basically telling him, yo, okay, I'm going to put your career on suicide notice. I'm going to zip up the body bag for you. So come to WrestleMania, you can beat me, and that will be the end of you being ever being referred to as the next John Cena. Maybe maybe Taker's doing it on purpose because he knows Reigns going to get absolutely <laughs> destroyed by this. Maybe. I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, Undertaker versus John Cena makes so much sense. It's a fantasy match. As Everyone event. wants to fucking see at WrestleMania. They've only okay. They faced each other back in the Ruthless Aggression era. That's back when it was Taker under Biker Undertaker and uh, Thug John Cena, which doesn't really really count, in my opinion. I don't really see it as that. Undertaker is always the dead man, like the the you know. And Cena wasn't even in his prime yet. No. And um, it makes sense to be the main event. It's not even for a title. It could be the main event. Yeah. Uh, CNA is confirmed for two movies and will leave after WrestleMania. It makes sense. The Undertaker doesn't want to put over someone who will leave after Mania. Michael Chow says. I agree, but you know Cena will be back. Yeah, Cena will be back, Michael Chow. He's, gonna, he's like The Rock 2.0. No, but he's he's way better than The Rock yeah. because The Rock will leave. For the Rock good. did come back. He went and made movies and came back and had two feuds with John Cena for two straight WrestleManias. But knowing the kind of guy John Cena is, even if he's doing movies, he's still going to come back and make appearances. Yeah. Because he, no matter what, WWE always comes first to that guy. Yeah. And that's why I respect the hell out of the guy. Yeah. Because he always comes back to WWE. WWE is his first priority. And you know. We're going to see him even yeah. after WrestleMania. It might be for a month or so, but we're going to see him back. Yeah. We're, we're going to. And Undertaker, not wanting to put over Cena because he'll be gone. So will you in this match. Both of you guys will be gone. Why not have that match? Take guys will be your last match at WrestleMania. What, what you can is retire it? after this. Go get the hip surgery that you desperately want what is and never have to wrestle again. Yeah, he doesn't have to wait till next year to face Cena again because he decided to put over Reigns this year. Doesn't what does Reigns need this for? My yard versus his yard. It, it's like Reigns does need it, but against The Undertaker? Wrong person to get put over against. Wrong. He's going to get his career suicide. Gar I cannot wait to hear the goddamn boos at WrestleMania with Roman Reigns coming out. He is going to get eaten alive, and then when he beats The Undertaker, it's going to be even worse. I mean, they could have built up for a year Reigns versus Lesnar again they for could've. this year. Instead of uh, the dumpster fire they're going to do next year with those two. But that yeah. would have been better for Reigns to go over on Lesnar even than Undertaker. Because at least he'd get cheered by yeah. beating Lesnar. He's not going to get cheered by beating The Undertaker at all. Michael Chow, compromise. The Undertaker versus The Miz dressed as John Cena. <laughs> oh, God. Or Tyler Breeze dressed uh, as Nikki Bella going yeah. into this the Money in the Bank yeah. match. Hashtag bad Nikki. Oh, yeah. Okay, through the, the total bullshit thing that you, yeah. uh, you have to go back and see. He's always like, bad Nikki. Bad. And, like, treating her like a dog. 
course he is. Uh, but yeah, Undertaker versus John Cena. It would be make sense to be the main event. And, and if we're Cena. picking a winner, we're picking John Cena. And it, in our minds, we were talking about this one time. It would have made a little bit more sense if Taker was still undefeated going into this match at WrestleMania. That way, I can respect John Cena ending the streak. I couldn't respect Brock Lesnar doing it. That made Part-time zero sense at the time. Garbage. And I know it was tough because it was Vince's call because he thought Undertaker was going to rest or retire after that, and he didn't. So he came back and got better in shape and won two WrestleMania matches purpose. since. So and that's now... kind of Undertaker's fault, you know, kind of telling Vince that I'm done after this one and then eventually coming back. So I don't know. Uh, like as much as we have hated John Cena over the years, I mean, everyone's finally coming around to like respect the hell out of the guy for what yeah. he's done for the company, and. So... Him putting getting the win over Taker, I don't think there's to be anyone that would be. And honestly, better. at the at the after the match, you can have Taker stand up and shake his hand. Like they can do the whole Rock and Cena thing, and they can go up the ramp together and then hold each other's arms up. And that would be the perfect way to end WrestleMania, man. That would just oh, it would do it. Nope, for me. we're gonna get Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar for the fruit roll up title. Oh, I actually, <laughs> you're not gonna like this. I'm hearing more and more rumors now that it's actually gonna be Reigns and Undertaker end the oh, show. Oh my God, no! That means Reigns is oh, if that ends the show, Reigns 100% wins. It's over, man. <laughs> the crowd is gonna flip, dude. If Vince, are you high? Your chairs that you put all across the ring are gonna be thrown into the ring. They're gonna they're gonna have to start a riot. Oh Reigns is gonna God. have to wear his actual full full out yeah, shield gear gear. Like that's gonna be insane, man. You're gonna <laughs> literally. I kid you not. We're gonna see signs that says if Reigns wins, re riot. Wyatt or riot? Riot. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Wyatt too. But they're gonna throw shit like. Yep, Pops, it's gonna be like back when like Hulk Hogan turned on uh, on uh, the N- on uh, WCW yeah, and he the NWO. NWO man. Do you see, if you guys haven't seen that, go watch how much shit was thrown into the ring. <laughs> oh garbage, my God. garbage. Everything that a fan could find, he just whipped it into the ring. Uh, I don't know. It's... So, tell us what you guys think of our card compared yeah. to what this dumpster fire that. Uh, WWE's actually putting on this yeah, year. Let us know what you guys think, and if you guys agree with all those matches, you know, leave us some comments on YouTube, uh, tweet at us, let us know what you guys think, and then uh, we'll get into the real card next weekend on the lowdown in Orlando. And uh, might as well end off because we're not going to do a show next week. We'll quickly do our NXT predictions. Yeah. Uh, so Michael Shout TV puts WWE will bring out The Rock, The Usos, the whole Evan Annoy family out there to save Reigns. <laughs> My God, I would lose my mind if that ever happened. Uh, Michael Chow, man, you cracked me up. Well, uh, yeah. I so- mean, if that car, if that was that card, I would be sad that we were missing this WrestleMania. But I am glad we decided not to go to this crap. Yeah, hundred percent. So we'll quickly go over the NXT card. Yes, because we're not going to do a show next week, and yeah. the lowdown in Orlando is the night, is the day after Takeover. Takeover, unfortunately. Yeah. Because TakeOver is usually on the Saturdays for every other big pay-per-view, except WrestleMania, they have the Hall of Fame on yeah, Saturday. it's on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, we'll get into... Uh, apparently, this match was announced. Uh, Alistair Black, the debuting Tommy End. Oh, yeah. Is gonna my be... boy, Tommy End. Guys, guys don't know who he is. Wait, man. You guys are going to get so behind Tommy End if you don't know who he is. It's going to be incredible. Guys, an exceptional wrestler. Kind of like a CM Punk kind of style type of wrestler, man. He's going to be really good. And seeing his vignettes, they've been yeah, looking pretty and, good. And uh, Alistair Black is being called. Yep. And he's facing Andrade Cien Almas. Is he the one that always gets put against the debuting people? I feel like anyone that's debuted, he had to face. They had to face him. I like Cien Almas lately. He's actually been doing pretty good at, with his new heel gimmick. Yeah. He's not been doing too bad. He beats... So uh, maybe that means Alistair Black will be a face. I guess so. I forget who almost beat this week, but I guess it was basically a, a squash to basically put him over to look good going mm-hmm. into that match against Aleister Black. Oh, I see. So I guess we're going to say that Aleister Black's going to win. Yeah, I'd say that. That's a way to put him over. I like it. His first match. He's not going to lose, right? Yeah. yeah. Next, we'll get into the triple threat elimination match for the NXT tag titles. Regal oh. announced last week that it was going to be elimination style. Which is great. That's very, very, very interesting. So we have the Revival, Dash and Dawson versus DIY, Gargano and Ciampa against uh, the champions, the authors of Pain. Yeah. Going into this, I actually thought it was only going to be uh, regular style, not elimination. But now it's elimination. That's it's it driving changes so everything much kind in my of. head, man. Something, they, so much can happen in this. Yeah, they 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 open the possibilities up even yeah. more. Like the if it was just a straight triple threat, you'd probably say, okay, Authors of Pain is definitely winning for sure. Yeah. But now that's elimination match, maybe. 
the revival and DIY team up and take out take the out authors there, of pain first. The great, some of the great matches we ever seen. We saw firsthand NXT Toronto uh, DIY versus the revival, and they can put on an epic freaking match. Maybe they team up and put and take those guys out. And we assume that's going to be <laughs> what? Greg Roman Reigns' future security team. <laughs> The authors of pain, yeah, yeah probably. It all must be only Lorcan this week, because they're ju- yeah, that's what it was. Because yeah. they're just as boring as Roman Reigns, so they might as well go with them. Yeah. And we assume that the revival is going to be called up after this, so this yeah. will probably be their swan song match in NXT. Have like one ma- last unreal match. Yep. But I think Gargano and Ciampa might win the titles back here. They, uh, I see them so winning their titles back. They're they're so good with the titles. I think that their titles actually belong around these two. And they can build the division around these it guys. It was sad that they lost it at yeah. uh, NXT, uh, the da- Dallas the Royal one, right? Rumble one. Was it Dallas? Yeah, Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah. It was sad when they lost to Officers of Pain. I'm like, really? They literally had like a two, like a month title uh, Houston, reign. Houston, take over Houston. My bad. Houston. Dallas yeah. was last year. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, they had a month title reign. These guys deserve so much better than that. They put on two match of the years last year. Yeah. That were 100%. in the top five for match of the year, and I think. You know what? If it's elimination style, maybe Authors of Pain loses. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with DIY. I'm going ahead with DIY. And Greg says DIY will win the titles back. It'll be glorious. Yeah, since they love playing Bobby Roode's theme in random yeah. places. Oh, my God. If you guys haven't seen DIY's YouTube video of <laughs> do him, him, they're, them doing their thing with Bobby Roode, go watch it. It's definitely something funny to watch. So I know we're both hyped for this match, so we're going to leave that for last. We're going to get into the NXT title match, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bobby Roode in the rematch. Yep. Um, okay, so before it was announced that Shinsuke was going to be added to the UK tour, I honestly thought it was going to be Bobby Roode 100%, and Shinsuke would get called up. But because Shinsuke is now advertised for the June UK tour, whether if this is a ploy by WWE to make us think that he's not getting called up or not, it brings more question to this match and who's going to come out as the champion. If I'm going to pick one, though, I'm going to say Bobby Roode beats Nakamura again. It just makes him look stronger now and more established as the NXT champion. They're trying to make Bobby Roode the, like, top guy in NXT. And if if he's got to beat Nakamura twice, so be it. And then Nakamura goes on the UK tour, maybe, or gets called up and does a UK tour again. Because well, I think when he gets called up, he won't be full-time. I don't think Nakamura is that full-time Maybe they'll kind do of what person. they did with Kevin Owens, have him on the main roster, but still have him in NXT as well. Yeah, do some NXT stuff too. I don't think uh, Shinsuke is that much of a full-time guy yet, or he's going to be when he gets called up. I think we're going to see Nakamura maybe two times a month at the most. That's just my guess. And we haven't really seen these guys. Like, if you watch NXT Weekly, the, the NXT champions aren't on every week. No. They, all they had this week on NXT was a, a promo pack. And neither of them were in the ring. They didn't have a stare down or anything. Maybe they'll have it this week. I'm not and that's sure. What's, that's what's leading me to believe that Nakamura won't be totally full-time when he comes up. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I, picking Rude. I'm picking Rude, too. Yeah. Just for the, the sake that they need to have him get a clean win over Nakamura. Yeah. And ha- establish him as the top guy in NXT. And for it to be glorious just for you, Greg. <laughs> but... I mean, obviously, it's going to be a really good match. It's going to be the main event. Yeah. But... Greg says, take over simply be glorious. <laughs> you got to get a Bobby Roode t-shirt. Yeah, I do. I got to get that. I got to get a... No, it's not about soundboard. glorious Greg. I got to get the soundboard thing. Glorious. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Bobby Roode going over on Shinsuke. Maybe the, he play, play the whole injury thing with his knee again. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. And we'll get into the main event that we think should be the main event because this is just unreal buildup. It speaks for itself. NXT Women's Championship match, Ember Moon versus Asuka, both undefeated. I think it should be main event. This has a better build-up and a better case to be a main event than Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura. Both these girls undefeated. Asuka, probably one of the greatest NXT Women's Champion ever. She's the only two-time champion, and she's... I think she's the only two-time champion, right? No, she's only... The, she's one-time champion. Yeah, she just never lost. She's just the longest rating. Yeah, my bad. Um... Longest reigning NXT champion or women's champion. Uh, Ember Moon still undefeated since the start. She debuted, what, last year? Last year, Dallas. At, WrestleMania last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, in, in, insane, man. She's never lost since then. I think this should be the main event for sure. It's going to be such an epic match. Um, but I think Ember Moon's finally going to pull it off. She's going to end Asuka's streak, and that's probably going to send Asuka into the main roster, maybe. They have a plethora of women down there that needs to get pushed and, and start getting more pushed now. So. 
Asuka's, I think, ready to go up, man. I think this is finally going to be her, her curtain call, and she should be called up to the main roster, and Ember Moon is your new champion. And obviously, if she does lose, they're going to have to have another match. Yeah. A rematch before she goes up. Yeah. And they finally, this week, Asuka cut a small promo, because she can still not speak English very, very well. But she at least cut a little one saying, no eclipse for Ember wow. Moon. Humanity. And then beat the living fuck out of some local jobber. <laughs> and even God. after the match was done, she continued to, like, just beat up on this poor girl. Wow. So the, I think they're really trying to make, excuse me. Asuka heel, but people are still cheering her mm -hmm. because they just love Asuka. Yeah. And it would make sense for her to be heel in this match and finally have Ember Moon, you know, go over and be the new face of the NXT Women's Division because she's just amazing. Like, yeah. we both know how great she is. Her finisher is, like, the best women's finisher I've ever seen. Unreal. Uh, <laughs> as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, like, apparently it hurt yeah. Billy uh, Kay. I think, that was just, I think that was all storyline. Well, Honestly, think. Neither of them uh, are even on Michael the Michael Chow but... puts, if Shinsuke and Asuka lose their matches... Do you think Shinsuke will appear in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? And okay, we'll answer that question first. Um, I don't think so because no. they don't get entrances in that. No, Shinsuke is more like a debut after Raw kind of thing, or debut or on please Raw. on SmackDown, please. Please on SmackDown, <laughs> or maybe debuts on Raw gets traded to SmackDown on the draft. I don't know. It's not even a draft; it's like trades. Uh, as for Asuka, can you imagine after Alexa Bliss wins her match? At WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan comes out and says, there are still one more SmackDown Live women's oh, wrestler I no. just signed. Asuka. Man, I mean, I'd love oh, it. Oh, man, the pop WrestleMania she'd get would be insane. I mean, I'd love it, but I know Alexa Bliss would be getting absolutely buried. Probably. So that's why I wouldn't like it. No. <laughs> but but going into their multi-woman match, what else are you going to do? Who, who Naomi's probably shit? not even going to be there. Who cares? <laughs> why is Oh, I want to rant about this so bad. Because yeah. I feel so bad for Alexa that she's being put in this multi-women garbage yeah. match. We're going to get freaking former Divas of the Past pairing, like Kelly Great. Kelly. And... Yeah, because they really deserve to be in the match because they've done so much this last yeah. year to build that SmackDown women's division to what it is. Right. Anyways, Ember Moon would definitely win this match, I think. And both undefeated streaks clashing. Yeah. It's like, it be... writes itself. It's it's an amazing match. It's, it's, it's an amazing build-up. It's going to be insane, man. This insane. is the, the match I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. And those are the only matches that are... Confirm. Maybe there'll be another match on it, like a, a just a regular filler match yeah. on NXT. Maybe Regal will announce something. But what other than that, that it's what's different. Dillinger now. doing, man? Like, well, well, yeah, we might thing? get that. Yeah, we get the what's it called? Uh, sanity. The six man sanity. tag might have Sanity teaming uh, teaming up against uh, our boy Dillinger, wow, Roderick, Roderick Strong, Strong and, and No Way Jose. <laughs> no Way Jose, who's become very over now with the NXT crowd. They're having that match this week, I assume. It's gonna be like a like it's gonna end in a DQ yeah. and they'll add it to, to uh take over. Um, I'm actually scared of Na No Way Jose getting called up. He's gonna get like if he goes to Raw, he's getting the Brodus Clay treatment, man. He's gonna get just watered down, Garbage. and the crowd's just gonna like, oh man. <laughs> so if that six man tag match happens. Yeah, I I think Sanity would probably. Win. Oh, Greg, I don't know if I want to read that right now because you're probably just gonna make brand, uh, corporate Cappy are really mad. What if Eva Marie returns and ends up being the one who beats Alexa Bliss? <sighs> I would flip my TV over and just jump out my window. <laughs> I don't even know what I do because I don't even want to think about a nightmare like that happening. Yeah, but... yeah apparently Eva Marie is rumored to be in it. Oh She's one of the. God. Why? <laughs> The division's done so well without I, her in it. I don't think she's going to be back, though. I think it's just going to be an appearance like Kelly Kelly. Like, she's not going to win or oh, anything. Oh, well, yeah, of course it wouldn't be anything because she can't wrestle. <laughs> she get in the ring and pull her hamstring. There you go. Dana Bosch versus uh, Eva Marie. Who can wrestle better? Get me fired up here, Greg. Stop yeah. talking about Eva Marie, okay? Uh, Michael Chow says, can Tyler Breeze dress as Nikki and enter the SmackDown Live <laughs> that, Women's yeah, Battle Yeah, be Royal? like Santina <laughs> with the whole Santino dressing up yeah. as Santina. As we say, it's like, oh, just can't my... remember when Santina won. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't want this match to be a joke. The women, <laughs> they deserve to not have a joke match. But unfortunately, they're being put in Into this dumpster match. fire match like this, in a stipulation like that, where it's just... We don't even know what kind of match. Is it first fall? Is and it we're a two battle weeks royal? Out. We're oh, actually we're almost a week out. <laughs> we don't know what kind of match it is. We just know there's like 10 people in it, or 8 people. Is it a gauntlet? Is it a battle royal? Is it a... What are we doing here? I know oh, what it is. What's going on? It's the Alexa Bliss Buried Alive <laughs> match. That's exactly what it is. I assume Naomi's going to be one of the return people in it. Returnees. Yeah, probably. It's... It's tough with her because of the injury she has. 
it's like touch and go. I've been reading. It's it's really touch yeah. and go. They're not sure uh, if she's gonna be ready in time yet. Well, it's like they're more. It's I know it's 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 Rollins, but it's like they care more about Rollins' injury. It's, we haven't heard anything from Naomi on TV yet. I've been only reading the dirt sheets about her. Well, um, hopefully we'll have more info and we'll be able to talk about a lot more on the lowdown in Orlando next week. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, that woman's title match is a joke. Um, not Ember Moon versus Oscar. Yeah. That match is gonna be insane. I'm just seeing if there's any recent rumblings right now. I don't see anything up there. Uh. No, nothing is come out yet of any news of anything. So, so. if that six man tag match happens, who wins? Uh, I say finally. Uh, in my opinion, I would finally put uh, Sandy being the ones to lose. They're finally getting like beat up. You know what I mean? Like finally, Roderick Strong, Ty Dillinger, and No Way Jose, uh, no way Jose come out on top here. If that happens. I could see it, but I'm still going with Sanity because I think they're going to be the dominant faction. Oh, here's some news. I think a lot of people like this. There are the WWE release of Seth Rollins DVD is coming out soon. Seth Rollins building the architect. Oh, redesign, re- re- redesign, rebuild, rehab. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, Shawn Michaels reveals he turned down a WrestleMania match with Styles. I'm not going to get really into that. But, uh, yeah. That's going to do it, guys. And next week, guys, remember, our all-day podcast from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's going to be great. Stay tuned for that. i got some more prizes and stuff on the way. And, again, I'm getting a Google Doc made for the first prize. So stay tuned and keep up with the channel. Follow us at No Holds Barred WP and YouTube. And just stay tuned. That's all i got to say. We might have to make a schedule for the Skype calls because there's probably going to be a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. We're we're tweaking some stuff here in the settings. It's Spreaker's great studio, but – I'm still trying to get us uh, to hear you guys. I got through the speaker. I got it connected. I got uh, Skype uh, connected to it. I just, for some reason, I can't hear you guys through a headset. So I'm doing some stuff and, you know, I'm really tech. I'm not that tech smart, but I'm pretty good. <laughs> not to toot my own horn or anything. Doing but... good with the podcast, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up. Yep. We did everything. Yeah. That's going to wrap it up for the special edition of... Of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars, uh, WrestleMania 33, rebooked here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also during the show, which we regularly have on the Lowdown Show, we have our list of 10, which didn't make its uh, appearance this week, or WWE headlines that will return when we continue the Lowdown Show after WrestleMania. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP and it on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording this podcast, it's posted in full on Spreaker and on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP, and it is also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand Wars. And you can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in on the conversation and having your thoughts and questions read right here on the podcast by tweeting at following at NoHolesBard WP. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cap. Very blissful. And we are always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. You want to sleep,